and we're on. So, welcome to Happy Hour. <laughs> uh, this is John Cheryl, my guest today, a veteran of the show. I've only had two people on the show twice. Really? Yeah. You and my dad are the only repeats. No. I, I'm um, running out of friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got to start cycling back what, through. How many episodes did you say, John? Uh, I think I'm in maybe close to 30 episodes. That's a lot of friends. That's more friends than I have. I didn't have a guest every one of those weeks, but, st- but that seems, I feel like, thank you everybody for indulging me and being on my show and being cool about it. All right. Making sure we are in line. Okay, great. We're crashed. This is actually really happening. Cool. I always have to check, but how are you? What's going on since you're on the show last since last time I saw you? Was that the last time I saw you? Mm, I don't think so. Because I saw, maybe it was the last time I saw you. We have two dogs that are whining outside, one in particular, my dog. Um, Just wait until Patty starts to howl. She likes to howl when she hears. Oh, it's no. hilarious. Was she howling when before? or No, it's like it has to be like if a bunch of other dogs are making sounds, and she's like, oh, I can make sound. And then she has this hilarious. It's like she doesn't know how to, to do it. <laughs> she doesn't know how to howl? <laughs> yeah. Am I doing it right, guys? Is this it? Is this dog stuff? Yeah, yeah. You were right, Patty. That's what guys would say. I don't know. <laughs> so I feel like great. I certainly have seen you. I saw you moments. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've seen you at least twice there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There is stuff. Okay, cool. Anyway, well, welcome back. It's good to be back. Um, I don't, I, I feel like I tried to make this like a real spooky episode. Shivering in my boots. Spooky. But I only really have two spooky things, and that's a spooky song and a spooky cocktail. I had like, I feel like a week ago, I'm like, I'm going to have like, decorations and I'm gonna maybe we should wear costumes and that I barely made it here so let's you know I let's w- just trim down the expectations to just prep being here. I might have dialed <laughs> it down anyway. I'm not a big Halloween person. Yeah. I'm I feel like have I shared this theory with you that pe- there's Halloween people, Thanksgiving people and Christmas people. Are you a Thanksgiving person? No, I'm a Christmas person. You're a Christmas person. Like a hundred percent. Okay. Um, yeah my sister is a, a Thanksgiving person. And my mom is totally a Halloween person. And I'm kind of like, I don't really know which one I am. Maybe You're still, I'm a Christmas person. What's that? Maybe I'm a Christmas person. So to me, Maybe like, decorate. so Christmas is like all good. You haunt, there is a little tendency to haunt your horn lust on Christmas. You know what I mean? Like it's all <laughs> about being happy, family, you get the meal, presents, positivity, just good, you know, Christmas mythologies that nobody even cares that they're true or not. It's just fun. Um, and then... So, like, Mr. Rogers was certainly a Christmas person. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then I feel like Halloween is the opposite. Like, if you want to get fucked up and trashed, and that's like, <laughs> you like you like doing that on the reg, that's like, you know, you're a Halloween person. And then Thanksgiving is for people that like to have fun, like to party, but are like, not. This is their big moment yeah. of the year to do it. And they like the big meal, and they, lo- they love their family, but, you know, they don't want to get, like, Okay, I might have to get rid of Gussie. <laughs> Gussie is like, hold on a second. Put in the comments if you can hear Gussie crying. <laughs> this is like so sad. You guys, be quiet. I think. How should, unprofessional. We can continue this conversation <laughs> over a spooky cocktail. Let's. Let's. So this cocktail. She's not going to stop whining. <laughs> <laughs> no, <it's laughs> At all. She's going to for an hour. Oh, it's okay. Patty will. I don't think. But Patty's like, I want to play, and Gussie's not having it. Anyway. If you want to entertain these fun people and you put Gussie in my car, I can do that. <laughs> no, it's okay. okay. Um, all right, so we're going to make, I looked up like a bunch of Halloween cocktails, and this is one of the few that didn't have food coloring in it or uh, edible glitter. So I went. Edible glitter? <laughs> there was one with edible glitter. I don't even know that's the thing. It, I saw it on Instagram recently. Who, who in their <laughs> life sees glitter as like, I want you to eat this. <laughs> make it edible. <laughs> We need to be able to eat this what glitter. What a dumb thought. I'm sorry if you want to eat glitter. So I think, Put it on your own I think we should start with whiskey. Um, I don't know. Is that, a, is that a good amount of whiskey? Here, you do it for yours. I'm flustered, man. I'm going to... Alicia, I get over <laughs> here and she's like, I'm so unprepared. And I'm like, Alicia, you're supposed to be the prepared one. I'm, I'm supposed to be the one that shows up and pretends... Mm. There's 
You just you administer it. So I wear John picked up this very it. lovely Mountain West Ruby Hard Cider, which I know some people over at Mountain West Hard Cider. And it is quite tasty. So the grave digger that doesn't have food coloring or edible glitter. I mean, I suppose you could put edible glitter in it if you, you wanted to, but I don't see that. You could thing. also put mashed potatoes in it. <laughs> <laughs> then it's a Thanksgiving cocktail. <laughs> So you're going to put in some whiskey and some hard cider. I don't really know what the ratios are. I'm like, again, I'm going to let you Whatever. choose your own measure. And then he kindly pointed out right before uh, we started doing this that I put ginger ale in the recipe and I bought ginger beer. So again, we're just, you know, whatever. It's cool. I, also, I don't know what the difference. Did you use a bottle opener for that? Yeah. Um, Is it a twist off? I think so. I don't even <laughs> I don't know what the difference between ginger beer and ginger ale is. I can't believe it's much time. I'm just going to do a quick taste test. I don't have a stir or anything. As much time as I spend on Wikipedia, I can't believe that I've never like figured out what the difference is. Um, okay, the next and most the spookiest step though, because this was this was what I why I'm flustered because I had to go back to the store to get dry ice. Oh. And that seems like <laughs> Woo! Yeah, that sound. Oh, look how cool that is! <laughs> oh, yeah. See, now yeah. it's family. All right. Now, how long is it going to do that for like <laughs> Two days. an hour? <laughs> You'll be able to drink it after this is over. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Totally worth it. <laughs> It sinks so we don't burn your lips on it. Cheers. Yeah. Spooky Halloween time. To uh, Halloween people. <laughs> this is fun. All right, I want to watch, see if this is like I'm afraid doable. I'm going to bubble up my face. Goes up my nose. <laughs> I can't drink it. I don't know if this is the best idea. <laughs> I can't drink it. It keeps bubbling in my nose. <laughs> That's like a really big chunk, I think, was my problem. I'm having this. Right, I'm going for it. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a good plan. <laughs> How'd it go? I didn't die. Good thing nobody's paying to watch this. No. All right. It tastes good. Mm -hmm. It tastes whiskey. The uh, dry ice is a minor. Oh. Uh, not minor, not major inconvenience. <laughs> Ooh, in three comments. Joshua Leclerc. This is too much fun. This is like just this is craft hour getting out of hand. <laughs> I feel like uh, Halloween, not being a Halloween person, is, <laughs> makes it difficult. Smoke coming out of your ears. <laughs> what happens when I get angry, man? You're just so mad all the time. Furious <laughs> that this drink is so complicated to drink. I, Armando, I almost wore a hat today for you. Because you never, oh, because you always wear a hat. Yeah. Easy. Well, I used to, apparently. The deal was, I was not making any money living in Utah at that time, probably when you guys were first getting to know me. So I didn't get a haircut. And I was like, well, here goes the hat. It's fine. A lot of people have been, uh, Scarce on the haircuts these days. I got my haircut on March 17th, the day before the world blew up, so it was like a good day to get my haircut. Good for like under six months. That's a good way to be. Yeah. I don't know, do girls get away with having their haircut less than guys? Yeah, I get my haircut maybe once or twice a year. Really? Yeah. Well, I'm mostly lazy, not because it's like mm -hmm. a plan. I forget, and I like I realize like eight months later that I'm like, oh, I haven't had my haircut in eight months. So I should I should do it more than that. Yes. See if you're like a ski bum, you can you can get away with that, like never cut your hair and it's like, oh well, he looks legit. But if you're a musician, I feel like it doesn't necessarily work the same. I think it does. I feel like musician you're you're artsy if you got messy hair, you know? You can sell that. You think so? Can I? <laughs> All, right. All right. I'm gonna start try. because I I don't wanna have to close this, close it up tonight. This drink has gotten significantly colder with this dry ice, I will say that. That is, it's primary function is to be cold. I think the bubbles are just an bonus. 
Alright, I'm gonna I'm gonna play some. That dry ice also gets, also gets rid of the carbonation. I didn't notice that. It's not as bubbly, but you'd think it'd be more bubbly. <laughs> the, you're fighting fire with fire. <laughs> anyway, alright, I'm gonna play a song because that's what this show is supposed to be about. And I'm gonna play the song that I started writing this week and it's This brand... whole time I thought it was about drinking. Well, that's just it. Now my goal for the next hour is to get you giggling so that you just can't like you have to shut it down oh my god don't <laughs> <laughs> um anyway so i wrote this song as what's today the 30th i started writing this on the 26th and uh i wrote this this week because i've been having a bit of a creative dry spell some would call it writer's block i believe is another term and I put this post up on Facebook, and I was really surprised at how many people, I was about, like, how are people in this weird time keeping their creative well full? And I got, like, 75 comments, and it was really awesome. Nice. And someone uh, posted, you should write a song about it, and I, for a moment, wanted to punch the computer screen in the face. <laughs> but then that's what I ended up doing. So thank you for the suggestion because I ended up writing the song. Like I have not been able to bring myself to write a pandemic song. Um, another song, I don't know. I just, I couldn't bring myself to do it. And I finally, this is my pandemic song. I finally, it's, I finally bubbled to the surface. <laughs> and I wrote my pandemic song. And this song is called, <laughs> this song is called When This Is Over. Exactly. This podcast or all of it. Whenever any of yeah. Anyway. <laughs> it's also not that, so just you know. Cool. <laughs> when this is over, I'm gonna blow my money. Tickets to go see my favorite bands. I won't care if my kitchen floor stays clean Cause I won't be home, I'll be playing every show I can And I'll just be glad to finally go Yeah. 
Oh, that's as much as I can hope for when this is over. When this is over. When this is over. I like the uh, when it's over. You know, it's funny. Like the songs, it, I don't know. To me, it's crazy. Like three words, you think like it's impossible to write three words that would be. <laughs> Guess he's still wanting three words that are special. Mm -hmm. But like when it's over, given a certain context, really can be something special. Um, so that speaks to me. Those three words, um, and then. Just the simplicity of I can see you doing that that being one of those like long like four minute outro. Yeah, like you could do like I'm gonna need you in the production for that. <laughs> Seriously. Bring in a big piano. Yeah, yeah. Outro. I can get see it. Um, once I learn how to play this thing over there. I yeah, I figured out yet. I know. How long? Yeah, if we've been living in a pandemic. I play it every day, I think, and uh, I've been got it in July, and I can almost play two whole songs. I can play. I can't mm -hmm. make you love me by Bonnie Raitt. Okay, almost, that's good. Almost. It almost sounds without only a few like stop and be like, oh, okay, the chord. So it's coming along. There'll be, uh, I'll probably put up an Instagram video because I'm super proud of myself when it's not, every time someone's watching me play, it's of course terrible, but when I'm by myself and it's just Patty, it's really good. Cool. <laughs> um, that song is one, of, I've been toying with the idea of learning that song. Oh, that song? No. Oh, that's a great song. I mean, I don't I, know how well it would do in cover sets, but I feel like it would do well. It's one of those slow, sad yeah. songs that would do well. Did you know it was originally written as a bluegrass song? I think I did read For that. Ricky Skaggs? Oh, I didn't know that Ricky Skaggs would do it. <laughs> yeah, and they were like, I know nah. it, was, it was supposed to be up tempo and it just wasn't working. Yeah, it was like, I can't make love me when you know. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. Supposedly, like, I read the backstory that it was uh, the songwriters got the idea because some guy got dumped. Some random guy got in Tennessee, I think, got dumped by this girl. He was furious and ended up, like, shooting her car and, like, you know, got in, in trouble. a bluegrass murder ballot kind of way. Yeah, shoot. he didn't kill her, but he like he was in court over it, and it was like silly because he just she dumped him, and then he just <laughs> overreacted and shot her car. And <laughs> um, he's in the courtroom, and the judge asked, "Well, like, uh, have you learned anything from this experience?" And he said, "I learned that I can't make her love me." Uh huh. And which is funny. And uh, so the songwriters thought, hey, that's funny. Let's write it. I guess they were thinking, let's write it. I can't make you love me. But, but then it was like, da, 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 da. and it was just like all the heartstrings. Yeah, but if you think about it, damn, he was right. You like, can't make, I can't make you love me. I will give up this fight. I don't know why I'm doing like the, uh, <laughs> the, the Phil Collins um, <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly. It's the only drunk fill I know. <laughs> oh my god, that would be a fun cover. It's a bluegrass. Let's switch it around and bluegrassify that song. <laughs> bluegrass by Phil Collins. <laughs> Suppose yeah. did you read the, in the news? Apparently, uh, his ex-wife hired a bunch of bodyguards to um, basically take over his mansion and then like pushed him out. It's some, no, she's talking about Is things that are kind of. I'm, it's Phil Collins mansion, so is it sweet? I'm yeah, sure it is. Sweet. I I imagine there's like a jungle room. There's like a like I don't know a lot of potted plants. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, anyway, see, speaking of things that are serious but funny, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, should I play a song? Probably eventually. Eventually. All right. So I'm playing the three songs that I have prepared. 
we'll see. Um, are, yeah, I don't know if you want to like, are there some comments that you're like, ooh, I do not want to react to that comment. Um, Has no, that happened? that's fine. Have so Keith, been... Keith, you are the one that he was, he commented, not sure if it was me, but it sounds like the comment suggestion I made on Facebook about like, just write a song about it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I, it was a good suggestion because that's what I did. So Inspiring. It was, fine. It was just, I think just when you're frustrated, of course, you're like, that's the last piece of advice. But of course, it's probably the most correct advice. Yeah. Right. And well, then Carly says, my hair is really long. <laughs> Hi, Carly. How are you? <laughs> Uh, writing the um, writer's block song, that one is, uh, I feel like, I don't I guess I don't have one, but I would think that's one of those topics that a lot of people already have. I've already got my writer's block song, or, you know, I've already written about that. Yeah. Um, I have a song called one. Bad Song that came out of writer's block, and it was just about all the things like, I sometimes think that songwriting is like golf. Like, when you hit it right down the fairway, it's like, yes, this is so much fun. And then when you shank it off into the trees, the whole whole day, they're like, this is the stupidest game ever. And I feel like songwriting is, is like that, too. Like, when you get that line, you're like, this is so great. Like, I, I all the feels. And then you have those days where, you're like, every line is just painful, like, working, like, you know. Anyway. Water out of rocks. Thank you. That's the exact I knew, I could, you, Yeah. <laughs> And there's those days, and, and my song, Bad Song, is about that. And it's just like, I'm going to write a bad song, and I don't give a fuck. I like <laughs> to hear, the chorus. <laughs> I like to hear this. You should call an audible and do that one last. Oh, I might have to look up the words on that. Let okay. me, I'll look them up while you play this tune. Okay. There's a lot of swears in that song. so. Uh, but you already said I, the F word once, so I think we're just going to open that gate yeah, today. Sorry. So, Aunts and uncles. I don't know if I'm sorry. are watching. My parents say that word. It's <laughs> right that word. My parents do not. <laughs> Your parents don't say that word. No. Oh. My parents say that word. And uh, uh, my, si my sister taught me when I was a teenager that swearing's okay if it's funny. There's a lot of truth to that. There really is a lot of truth to that. Racism is also okay. Is, no, swearing is different than racism. It is. I'm saying, well, like, if you're a comedian, that's the thing. Oh, like, okay. If it's funny, then you get away with saying all sorts of wild things. But I think that right. the reason comedy works is because it's, it's not actually racism. No, it's, it's it's pulling back the veil, and it's right. like, yeah. and it's like this ooh moment. We're like, yeah, it's true. It's like funny because it's true, but it's also like, it, yeah, it's kind of like pulling back the veil and calling everybody out, which makes it funny. Does that make sense? Uh, I feel like you get to do that if it's funny. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what I mean. You yeah. Get Otherwise, it's preachy. It's not funny. Yeah. It's preachy. It's preachy to somebody, to even somebody, one way or another. Yeah. I guess that's what I really mean. Um, let me try and reel this back in. <laughs> <laughs> you, get, you get away with as long as it's funny. Oh, there's my uncle. My uncle John just tuned in. Just he's one of the people that I'm gonna be like. Uncle the F word has been dropped, so just know that that's gonna happen. Okay. I'm <laughs> Uncle John too. Yeah, Uncle John. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. I give uh, weekly ukulele lessons to my niece, and everybody's like, hey, Uncle John. I'm oh, like, nice. I'm Uncle John, yeah. My Uncle John gave me a bicycle that he built. It's pretty cool. Wow. I still ride it. I That's cool. Much. I respect the uh, bicycle mechanic skills. He's got them. In spades. Okay, well. I'm going to look up these lyrics while you lay a song on us. All right, well, I guess I'll tell the people that are listening. Um, this is a song, the three songs I'm playing now I wrote in Utah. Um, I just moved here last summer. So these are the most recent songs I've written. And this first one I'm going to play is um, kind of, uh, songs are about feelings. It's that, the song doesn't have to be true or um, it, there has, that, no, it doesn't have to be factual, completely fictional. It just has to feel, I think. Mm -hmm. So one feeling I have every now and then again is I feel like, wow, I'm like a really a failure in life. Like I'm just not, there's all these checkpoints in life that I haven't met, um, boxes that I haven't checked off. Um, and this I mean, song is kind of about that feeling. I don't feel that way. I'm very happy with my life. Um, and I feel like I'm a happy person, secure with who I am. But every once in a while, I do have that feeling. Yeah. So this song is is kind of about that, and it's called "Whatever Happened to Me." I 
think I've only played this for one person, so this is the first like publicish performance. Well, well, thank you. Yes. Hope you're listening, Lithuania. Whatever happened to that girl? I used to see her every day. My soul got tangled in a ginger hair, and she said she'd follow me anywhere. Now she's married in Santa Fe. Whatever happened to that house? With the porch that wraps around. I daydreamed of making love in the kitchen light, then listening to the house all go night. Thinking Dennis lives in hell. One year. Still the same. One year, one more. I am to Whatever happened to me? Where's the man I was promised to be? The world was mine once upon a time. Somehow I choked on life Whatever happened to me Whatever happened to that job I was supposed to have it made I was headed to the top and moving fast Probably could have bought the house in cash Still living day to day Whatever happened to my son He's got his mama's eyes I don't care who you are, I don't care what you do I only want to share my life with you it's only in my mind. One year more. It's still the same. One year more. I am to blame. Whatever happened to me. Where's the man I was promised to be? The world was mine once upon a time But somehow I chose your life But it never happened to me Whatever happened to me Where's the man I promised myself that I would be? The world was mine once upon a time But somehow I don't lie, whatever happened to me. There you go. That'll be the snappy thing. Thank you. So nice. I think in some context. It works. I don't, I don't. It's fine. There you go. So about me is that that song, great song, um, very cool. Well, it's interesting because when you said it's not like you prefaced it with, uh, you know, it's about the true notion, not necessarily the true storyline. And I was like, I'm pretty sure you don't have a kid, as far as I know. No, <laughs> well, the last line is he's only in my mind. Oh uh, yeah, so I, I heard that and I was like, this is like the son you want to have yeah. in the song. All those are everything in that is fictitious. Uh, whatever happened to that girl. Um, my soul got tangled in her ginger hair. Mm -hmm. I've never had a relationship with someone, yeah. a ginger. Um, <laughs> ginger. Except for Brent. Um, <laughs> I hope it's watching. And, uh, and then like, I've never, you know, never, I guess there have been houses where I've been like, oh, okay, that would be sweet. Um, yeah. But that's mm -hmm. like never seriously 
there's never been a job where I got close to having where it would have been like, you know, making over forty thousand dollars a year and yeah. like I would have an office and things right. would work. But I like but I, what I like is like that notion of like so my song Halfway to Houston is true, but it's not true. Like it's the notion is true, the sentiment's true, but the series of events in the song are like completely fictitious. And so like I always think when it comes to songs, like you have this idea this event or this line or whatever it is and that's like just the seed you plant the seed and you let it grow whatever direction it takes you run with it and i i got some advice recently this summer about like you know there's a song i have um just checking in and it's about like friendships that you kind of wish you had nurtured more or like what happened to friendships over time and there's a lot of truth in that song and so there's a lot of truth in that song but it also kind of like took it and just went with it. And the advice I got was to go, like, don't worry about who you're writing about. Like, just go with it. Cause like, you know, write, write your truth. Even if it's like, it's not like liable or anything, but at the same time, it's like, don't worry about like, Oh, I don't want this person to know that this song's about them and blah, blah, blah. Like just write it. And so there's a lot of stuff in that song that's not exact series of events, but all the notions are true. And so it's like, you kind of have to like pull from the part that's true to you and then, like, oh, fancy it up with some uh, good storytelling. So, yeah, yeah I got it. I'm fortunate. I've never, well, I've never felt like I've been put in a position where I had to worry about that, um, which probably has, says more about my life than my songwriting because I've just moved around. Well, I, I'm, I'm going to stop talking about that. Um, <laughs> I'm still talking in the direction I'm thinking. Um, so, like, I've never had to worry about burning bridges or whatever, mm-hmm. but, like, Man, I would like songs are like that's the end. Have, I have a song on my on my fancy post-it note set list over here. There's a when I wrote it, I was like, is this libel? <laughs> like, because I changed the name, but I didn't change it that much because it was this the person's name wasn't super uh, great for a song title, but this title is, and it's 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 close enough. So was, anyway, but it was just like. When I first, it was an old song, so it was when I first started writing songs, and I and I was like, I don't know, like there's a lot of truth in the song, but at the same time, I'm like, yeah, but it's a song, you know, and it's, I don't, I don't know, it was just, I I towed the line with that, and I was like, is this, it's not, but I don't, also at the same time, I'm like, no, 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 like it's fine. I was just, I think I'm way more worried than I certainly need to be. Does that make sense? Yeah, like there's no <laughs> worrying about um, libel or whatever is like. Uh, yeah, worrying about I don't like know. emotional libel. Lisa Owen Bradley. Hey guys, I actually remember uh, yeah. that name actually. That's cool. She said that she met you before. Yeah, so Five Church is a restaurant in Charleston. I actually really enjoyed playing there. It was an old church on Market Street. Market Street is one of, like, one of the oldest roads in, in North America. Oh, that's um, cool. Really cool. I, I played so much music there the few years I was in Charleston play music in Charleston and um, it's an old it's an old old church actually it's old chapel is Mariner's Chapel hmm. um, at least I don't know if you knew that and so these Mariners would come into Charleston and they wanted to go to church that for a long time that was their church and it eventually you know times changed and um, the church was no longer a church and then it was a Mexican restaurant for a while but then immediately um, next move <laughs> There's a restaurant, I can't, I guess it's, is it Five Church in Charlotte? It's it, there's a restaurant in Charlotte. Oh, okay. Um, and then Jamie Lynn, I think, is the chef there. He's been, like, he's a celebrity chef. He's been, oh, on, he's, a, cool. like, he's a very good chef. Um, he started that restaurant in Charlotte, and then he opened up a sister restaurant in Charleston called Five Church. And the some of the best ramen I've ever had, um, like really really good ramen. Also, I had a like everything I ate there was excellent. They had a heirloom salad that was just like heirloom, heirloom tomatoes, delicious. Um, but thank you guys for 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 tuning in. Holy guacamole! I'm blown away. Guacamole. Um, well, then my chair well. is really creepy. I got these chairs at the thrift store today. She was bragging to me before we started the camera about her. Three dollar, mm. but really million dollar chairs. They're not. They're like forty dollar chairs. But I've got three dollars each. But it's awesome. Ricky, so I'm sorry. It's like percussion. What am I doing? What song should I play? 
She said, history is based on a true story. Your comments about some of your song reminded me of that. That's, That's funny. funny. I've never heard of history described that way, but uh, based yeah. on. That's a great point. Now I'm like deep pondering thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should play a song. Is that what we should do in the show? Is that what we're doing? I'm going to cut this because I don't want the same disaster. Last time I was on the show, <laughs> she asked me to play the most complicated song I know at the end, and I was too drunk to play it. I just had to like Pull the parachute cord and like, I gotta get out of this. Just so everybody knows, I did make food, so I'm not sending John home hammered. I'm gonna make sure that he gets nice, well around his meal. Utah Highway Patrol, please don't take advantage of me. <laughs> yeah, this is being broadcast. <laughs> That's a good point. Anyway, I'm gonna feed it. It's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be fine. Anyway, um, should we play this before my, uh, should we play this at the end, do you think? We can do whatever you like. I'm gonna play my potentially libel song. What do you think? Mm, or do funny. you want to make sure I play the song about friendship? No, I think did I play that last week? I'll I, play my potentially libel song. Yeah. <laughs> Drama sells. Um. Yeah. And so. give it. You want to tell us a little bit about it? Sure. Come on, like, let's <laughs> stoke the flames, girl. <laughs> the person I wrote this song about. His um, name's Randy. No. <laughs> my roommate. We live in Park City forever. Her name's Randy, and I. Her name is Randy. Her name is Randy. I've never met a girl. R I N capital D E E. I love Randy. <laughs> okay, Parker. This is one of my buddies. This is like trying to get drunker than last time. I like. I say. I. Hey, you know, Parker, you're on to something. Parker, Michael Parker. Yeah, you're on to something. I'm. I support your city. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> anyway, so this song is about. A he's from Tennessee. Of course, he's gonna say that. <laughs> This song is about a person, a real life person. Um, of course, I took the most dramatic parts of my relationship with this person, my friendship with this person. But I do have to say, I met this person years ago, and then I wrote the song years later. And so it's this song's probably like six or seven years old. Ooh, I don't even know. Um, but I will say to this person's, to her uh, merit, she is the reason I'm friends with a lot of people. She was like the centerpiece social person at the, at the center of this group, group of friends I had in Park City and we all met through her and I am still friends with most of those people. Are they still friends with her? None of us are friends oh. with her. <laughs> so that's what the song is about. But she was really kind of like the social like socialite that brought everyone together and then we all met and became friends and it was such a good time and, and then she and then she, speaking of burning bridges. All right. Is this song called Burning Bridges? No, but there's a reference to it. Okay. It's changing my strength really into. Getting up the bubble school. You rolled into town with your sorority smile. Oh. You chase your makers sprites. <laughs> And you ought to solve your sweet Kentucky draw. Girl about town overnight. Oh, 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 Said the right things. You wore the right clothes. You knew the right secrets to know. You bargained for trust, bought and low and sold high. Everybody but you. Oh, 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 oh,
know why. Burn all your bridges before we reach the other side. Hit the ground running while the ashes still falling. Nobody fought you for the crown that you forged. Mornings you chose to live You fed us cake, but it was ash in our mouths. You is clay, you brought it down. Any good comments? <laughs> so this Lisa girl here that's commenting that laughed at Michael Parker and said, hey, that friend, she uh, came to see me like play music at this Irish bar that I played at that he was the GM at. Oh, that's um, fun. And uh, I, she's uh, for sure until recently was probably the person that seen me play the most. Like she would come to see me maybe like sometimes once a week, maybe once or twice a week. <laughs> uh, and um, Lisa, I'm sorry, but there's a new guy in town. His name's Ron Anderson. He lives in Salt Lake. He goes Ron. to see music like every night. Yeah. He'll go to like two or three. He knows shows. everybody. Yeah. He knows like all the up and comers. He knows what everyone's doing. He is on it when it comes to his yeah. playing. So I think he's seen me more than anybody now, which is so incredibly flattering. Um, can you think of who has seen you the most? Um, it's hard to say lately because all my shows have been super local. And when I used to play in Salt Lake a lot, I was friend John Nielsen who would come to a lot of shows. And he would occasionally make the trip up over the mountain to come see me in Hebrew or Midway, but it's been a minute. I mean, I know John. Pandemic. Yeah, I've seen him. But he come he used to come to a lot of shows pre-pandemic life. But I would say he came because he came started coming to shows when I was playing in Bonanza Town and solo shows. And so he has been to like band shows, solo shows. He's been to like all the spectrum of the house concerts. So he's seen me in very various formats, which is pretty yeah. cool. Cool. Man, John. Oh, and he sent me a really nice message the other day. So thank you for that. That was really nice of you. Mega famous. They do sound special. Oh, they're just good people. Good people in the world. I don't deserve you. <laughs> Once I move to Salt Lake, I will come to see you every week. Ah, the club. Oh, good joke. <laughs> <laughs> so Michael, good joke. He he definitely Parker goes. He goes by oh, Parker. Parker. Well, I don't know. Maybe Mister Parker. Maybe he goes by Michael now. Mike, I don't know. Mike, are you going by Mikey these days? Um, he uh, prides himself on his uh, punistry. Punistry. Yeah. Did you make that word? I just did. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to think of uh, amalgam artistry and pun. That's what I came up with. Yeah, he'll come up with another one. Like he'll, he'll like help rapid fire. Four or five puns. Nice. Come on, man. I was, you can I do was hoping you're familiar with my <laughs> brand to close guitar so I can talk them up. But that was Tell a us good more. Pun, pun. pun. <laughs> um, close guitars is a guitar company in Provo, Utah. And they, I just bought one of their guitars. It's a travel guitar. I'm pretty excited about it. I'm not playing it today. What can you tell me a little bit more? What's special about their guitars? Maybe you want to tell you what's special about guitars. They, they're carbon fiber, so they hold up really well. So for I got a travel guitar, which means when I can travel, it will be indestructible. <laughs> 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 when you can travel. It's really nice, though. Super light. It's great. In the it's future. Guitar. 
they gave me a nice tour of the the facility and where they make all the guitars and stuff. It was very cool. So. Um. I uh, I think I've seen a video of like someone hitting their guitars with a hammer and then picking it up and playing it. Yeah, no, but they're indestructible. They're pretty awesome. They don't. The greatest thing I think is they don't go out of tune if it's cold or hot. Yeah, right. Yeah. The temperature doesn't affect them, so they stay in tune all the time, which is pretty nice. Yeah. You know? Especially, I had this gig this summer where I played a, a really cool corporate event, and it was like a retreat. They call the me the Punisher. Punisher. Oh, good one. Anyway, I went to play this corporate retreat up in the Uintas, and it was like this, their annual get-together, and they spend a week in the wilderness, and they do all this cool stuff. And the last night, they had me come up and play around the campfire, which was a bundle of lights because there was a campfire van because um, it was really high fire danger. But we hung out, and I played songs around the campfire, and I really didn't – I didn't have my get close guitar yet, and I was like, I really – Wish I would have bought it before then, because it was it was chilly and I was I had to like hike in and I'm like it would have been really nice to have, but that was like the game where I'm like I have been waiting to buy one for a long time. I'm like I'll just I just gotta get one. I gotta get it. It's kind such of, crazy events because I camp a lot. I like to travel like what I can. I like to camp a lot. It's kind of one ironic benefit of um, the cheap guitars like this one. So this guitar. I guess the neck is mostly solid wood, but like the body and back and sides is all um, laminate. Mm -hmm. So it's super cheap. I mean, this, you could buy this guitar new for six or seven hundred dollars, but because it's laminate, it's mostly glue. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it doesn't matter. Like it's just like super solid. It's like Can you huff it? Can I huff it? <laughs> I haven't tried. So you're made. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I have huffed it. Now that I think about it, I've worked on this guitar and huffed it. Did not get high. I guess I got high on guitar nerdery. Yeah. Typical. Typical. Um, yeah. Klaus, close. Close. Close guitars. Do you, think, a, do you think they're maybe. listening? Maybe. I don't know. I didn't tag them. I should tag them. Okay. I'll tag them in the books later. You guys need to make a new headstock. I'm sorry. Because there's no room for a tuner. That is the one bummer. Well, it's just like, it looks. I just thought of it with something I can't say. Um, <laughs> I feel like the a guitar's heads a headstock that doesn't look good is like somebody that has like facial features in the wrong place. It's just like <laughs> like everything else might be. Tell me, tell me how you really feel. Yeah, but it's just I mean, <laughs> so like seagull guitars. Mm -hmm. They have really ugly headstocks. Are those the flat ones that like fan out? Um, or the little skinny ones that point up? Point skinny was it point okay. out? Um, is it ovation that has like the weird like arc and then the flat thing? Uh, it it's kind of kind of thing going on. Yeah, I say ovation like kind of curves and then at the very end it kind of. Yeah. Um, I, I'm okay with ovation headstock. Okay. I am, and it's a personal preference, but I feel like seagull headstock is like, who, who thought of this? Yeah, like it, it maybe it's functional, but it just doesn't look good. <sighs> And I know you're all. No, but none of them. I should There's just stop. Rampant comments of people disagreeing. Just kidding. No one said anything. <laughs> How do you feel about guitar headstocks? Yeah. Tell us in the comments. I and I'll post it about. on the screen if you have a if you have a nice relevant, you know, great counter argument. I would love to see a counter argument. If you really love seagull guitars and you're super pissed right now, please by all means let us know. Really, there are two headstocks that everything is a derivative of. The Martin headstock, Obviously. which is what it is, is just, you know, a plank of wood. And it's completely functional, but that's what when people think headstock, acoustic guitar, the Gibson headstock is a derivative of that. The Taylor headstock really is a derivative of that. Every, all like six by six headstocks are like that. And then the Fender headstock is the other one, mm -hmm. My, which was first because we still wanted <laughs> The Telecaster the sound. and then the Strat headstock, but it's like all other, it's, you know, six on one, tuners on one side. Anyway, I'm being a guitar player now. <laughs> oh, um, I thought about for our next round of drinks, there's straws over there that you probably could have used. <laughs> oh, that's smart. <laughs> anyway, just keeping that in mind for the next round of bubbly, spooky beverages. What time oh. is it? 6.9, oh my god, <laughs> how are we talking? <laughs> That's why nobody's it's, watching, we're it's talking. It's funny because I was like, three songs, we only prepared three, usually we go through four or five, uh, and we're like, oh right, it's John Cheryl, we're gonna go through three we're songs. We're gonna chat. <laughs> All right, what do you got for us? Okay. <laughs>
So this is a song I uh, started writing last summer. It was one of those songs like the chorus like just kind of came to me, and I wish I was like, I when things just kind of you wish you could remember how it just, but you can't for whatever reason. Whenever things just you can't remember, how did it just happen? Um, but I remember the house I was it was the first house I moved into in Salt Lake, and it I just kind of had this uh, a couple of lines came to me. And I was like, oh, that's really, really nice. And then uh, some more stuff. And I finished the course effortlessly. It was one of those like, oh, this is easy. I'm really happy about it. It moved me. Um, it was like, a, was as we were talking before, like one of those fictitious uh, song ideas, yeah. notions. Um, and then I guess in the early spring, I was like, oh, it kind of kept on nagging me, the song. Like it wouldn't leave me alone. I'm like this is the one that the chorus that I like love. You haven't read this one. Oh, I haven't. Um, so excited. Yeah, and I played this one. I actually wrote this song on Dobro, oh. um, but it. Uh, I don't. I played it a couple of times and it didn't work. Um, and I think it might work better for guitar. Mm. Maybe I'm just not good enough on Dobro yet. Mm. But um, mm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> so, Spring, That's not spring, I finally like buckled down. I'm like, okay, I'm finished the song. I don't even remember if it was like pre corona or post, but I was like, all right, I need, I want to finish this. Actually, it had to be pre corona because um, I was like in damage control mode after everything shut down. How are we all? How are um, we all currently? So, anyway. So, ended up putting things together, and this song is like fictitious. Um, describes, I guess, a relationship. Uh, the course of a relationship that I did not go through, but what's like, you know, stranger than fiction, fiction to me now is like basically almost like it's uncanny. The resemblances this song has to my, this past summer for me, mm. which was really, but you wrote it before, right? Yeah. Oh, guys, I'll tell you later. Come on. Hmm. Well, we've been doing this forever, but I'll tell you about the weird synergy that I had with the song, the first song that I played. Okay. Yeah. This is the first time that ever happened to me. I think like. I'm oh, what? I'm gonna make you drink while. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know if you want me to or not. <laughs> I don't, I think I'm done while we're recording. Well, we're done. This is fine. Okay. <laughs> we're just gonna do two songs. Yeah. Okay, then I'll just keep going. <laughs> seasons came and the seasons went. Watch them change and change again. The end of one will bring one new. And one day, one will be you. Once the world became alive, and my heart felt. When I saw you smile, then the wind was warm again. Days are getting shorter now, and these nights soon become cold. The church I have to go. Oh, summers for lovers, winters for strangers, spring is someone new. Leaves have changed color, no watch them fall like these. Autumn reminds me of you. The sun was high that afternoon, met you there the day in June. We talked for hours till the sunset came, your same skin glowed, then I whispered your name. The night was still, the moon had gone, and so I slept with you in my arms. Dreamt away till daybreak. The sun is dipping lower now, and this light is like before. I can see your shadow once more. Summers for lovers. Winters for strangers, spring is someone new. The leaves have changed color, and watch them fall like leaves. 
Heart of me reminds me of you. Someday soon, the snow is gonna fall. Cover everything up like nothing happened at all. I'll haunt this world so quiet, so alone. Waiting for another spring to come along. Summers for lovers, winters for strangers. Spring is someone new. The leaves have changed color, I watch them fall like the years. Heart of reminds me of you. Reminds me of you. Uh. <laughs> I don't know if the mic could pick that up. <laughs> well, it's like right there with Gussie's whining. It's like the same. Volume level. Anyway, that was a great song. I feel like I have heard that song. Did you play that at your house concert this summer? Mm -hmm. At sure. Maybe I did. Because I'm going to say, I feel like I remember that song. Did I play the Dobra? No. Did you? Yes. You played a show. Just flip flopping. Because that week you played at Melvin's too. And no, because as Miley's house concert, you Thank saved you your Dobro songs for the end. Because you didn't switch guitars, and then you switched, and then you stayed on the dead row, and then you switched. Did you know? Yeah, I think that. I think okay, so. maybe I did play it. I don't need you to con confirm whether or not this is true. If you're still watching, which you're probably not. Anyway. <laughs> well, if he's still watching, that man's got some patience. Well, yeah, seriously. Anyway, um, oh, I made another drink because I feel like we needed a spooky. We need spookiness for the last song. Straw? Straws and spooky. Spooky and straws. Red pill or the blue pill? Oh, jeez. Of course, I got the red pill. I'm a male chauvinist. <laughs> of course. She's projecting that on me now. Or you're a Republican, one of the two. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Change the topic now. Anyway, yeah, let's not. I already voted. We're done with that until let's not talk about it until November 4th. Right, seriously. Anyway, um, so I have a spooky song. For my last song, because we only do three songs on this show with you, because that's what we do. Apparently, we only do two within the lot of time. <laughs> We're just going to keep going. Why do I talk so much? <laughs> I don't know. You know, some people say I, I'm shy and I, I, I'm i quiet. I don't know. I like, yeah. I don't know. Because it feels like we're, you know, we're, I don't I, I don't know. So much I told you last time, like when I get around you, it's like, ah, oh, someone that does what I do. Like, right. Let's chat. Well, that's fair. Okay, so that's fair because that was my Facebook post with seventy-five comments. Was like, hey, like there's so many things I normally do that keep me in front of other people that do this. That it's like, um, and so I have a, a couple of friends who reach out, and be like, we need to have like a Zoom hangout where it's just like not a live stream and not a song swap where we just hang out and talk because I feel like that you know, we're not doing that. We're not just like yeah. being, you know, there's, there's like, I love coming to do your shows and stuff, but there's that element of like, can we just talk about what a pain in the ass, like X, Y, and Z is when it comes to this job, which is super specific and nobody else gets it. And so like, I think that there's that element is, is missing as well. Within 15 minutes of being here, I immediately showed, um, Alicia, my new Venmo sign. <laughs> <laughs> It's like my, I put in my tip case. I'm which so is, proud of it. Which is so funny because I've been stupid, right? strategically thinking like I need to put a QR code on my tip jar bucket because I have the, oh, you should, definitely. the name. I have I have a little card that has my name on it and my Venmo and my PayPal. In case you don't have Venmo, you can go to just the link and PayPal me. Or But then I was like, I should just put the QR code right on the bucket so you can just scan it because I have this pink it was a garbage can from Staples. It's a pink garbage can, but it's now a tip jar. <laughs> and I'm like, I just need to like 
print out a QR code and tape it to the front of it and be like, then you can just scan it. Anyway, yeah, these are the things we think about strategically. Yes. Okay, I don't really know the song very well, but I really don't really say that. Play. Say you are Cut that pro. out. Cut that out. I'm a professional musician. Yeah, we'll edit that in post. <laughs> we'll take it out in post. We'll bury it in the mix. Um. Anyway, so this song, I this love. This song, song you've been in love with for years. Yes. You've been playing it for thousands of people so, so long, and now you want to bring it to those at home. Yes, and uh, I think I feel like my dad learned this song a long time ago, and I was like, that is a really cool song. Like, I knew about it, but then I heard him play it, I was like, I'm gonna play that. Did we mention that Klaus makes guitar uh, guitar pedals or uh, cables? Cables. All the way? <laughs> I have one. <laughs> it's pretty sweet. <laughs> she was being earnest when she said that, too. I'm not joking. Like, it's been really nice to you. Message me if you want to hear about their guitar cable. Um, I've played shows with it, and it's quite nice. I like the ones that are wrapped in the nylon fabric. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> what is, you know what's fun, funny is funny? Like, that I was the wimpiest amount of <laughs> smoke. It's okay. What are you going to say? Uh, never mind. Not worth saying. Okay. Play spooky. Okay. Okay. Let's play Let's, spooky. We're going to play spooky. Thanks, Thanks Sam.
Lisa. No. That's a song. It's Mark Friedman. Mark Friedman. Hi. I thought it was Mark Feldman first. I know. I'm not really excited. I love those Do you know movies. who Mark Friedman is? No, but I know who Mark Feldman is. <laughs> well, who's Mark Friedman? Mark Friedman. I, mean, I guess it's a Is that Mad Dog? Mad Dog Friedman? It's from man from Colorado. Great blues musician. Oh. harmonica. Fun to jam with. Anyway, um, so there's that song. That was a, that was the spooky, the second spooky thing that we have that I have for my Halloween themed show. So scared. Is today the thirtieth? Is today the 29th? Twenty ninth. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I put thirtieth in the description. Because I'm playing tomorrow, <laughs> and I have specifically chosen not to play on the thirty first. Same, same. Also, I didn't get offered any opportunities to play the thirty first. So. Uh, I wasn't going to say that I didn't get any opportunity <laughs> either, but now that you say that, I just wasn't offered any. Gift. But Actually, I, would I say, might have someone might have asked me and I said that I was playing on the thirty first. So you wouldn't have to. Um Pixie and the Party Grass Boys is playing at the Urban Lounge in their parking lot on oh, really? for an outdoor show and I'm like, I might want to go to that. I'm gonna say about it. Anyway, that's a that'd be a really fun show. So, uh do you have one more song for oh, us? Oh yeah. Because we're only six minutes over. This okay. is fine. We're doing fine, everybody. How are you? How's your drink? What are you drinking tonight? It is Mad Dog. What are you going to be for Halloween? Um, all right. Oh, yes. I know. Anyway, but um, what are you going to be for Halloween? Tell us in the comments. I don't know what I'm going to be. If I don't know what I'm doing. But I have. I always have a backup costume just in case. I'm not a costume person. I have a... Can I tell you about my backup costume? Anyway? No. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. I have a... A 1980s prom dress that is long sleeve and full sequence from top to bottom. Whoa. That I just have to keep on the back burner at any given time. <laughs> Whenever I need it. So that's it doesn't your zip up all the way. But. So what's your uh, plan A Halloween costume? No, that's like that's like, oh, you need a costume? Stat, it's the best okay. costume. I have one, but yeah, they're back up. I don't know. I'll think about it. I have a little costume box in the basement. Oh really? Yeah. You are a Halloween person. No, I, like I lived in Park City in a ski town, and there was a lot of those things you had to dress up for. So like, okay. I love wigs and capes and spandex. I have like a I have a gold lame leotard. A what? Um, what? What? Like what? a gold leotard, just in case. Okay. I don't know. You never know. We <laughs> you never know. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> That's true. Thanks, Ed. Let us know in the comments when you need a gold leotard. <laughs> well. You have to dry clean it before you give it back, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, I've got one more song. I'm a, I'm a little apprehensive to play this because I just finished writing it yesterday. I haven't even finished this song yet. I played it. So yeah, so I got. Can't be. I, I have to play it. Yeah. Um, the deal is because it's new. I don't. Uh, I'm not. I have to practice lyrics. Usually, what I do is I have to sleep on lyrics like three or four times before I can do it extemporaneously. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, it's like a lot of thinking. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. you're not really involved. Well, I feel like I can't do it. It's just mm -hmm. too fast, and my mind doesn't work fast enough with words. Um, but you can but, throw out things like extemporaneously, an hour and 10 minutes into a show about drinking. Yeah. <laughs> just... um, anyway, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like selectively dumb. <laughs> And uh, yeah. anyway, yeah, so this song is called Someone Else. You know the song Wedding Dress I do? That's um, it's, it's a funny song. I'm so glad yeah. to marry someone else. So yeah. this has the same, this has the same trick. And I've been sitting on this song for a few years, actually. Mm -hmm. I had the hook. So I had this hook before I had the wedding dress hook. And it's mm -hmm. really this, kind of the same uh, lyrical toy. Um, and now I'm just totally, I'm not even talking to you. I'm just talking about songs with Alicia. Um, <laughs> so we do. we're going to do app and sober anyway. So yeah. you're just in on it now. So like, uh, I been in a few relationships in my day and, uh, after none of them have ended successfully, I guess. And, uh, so, but after one, 
I was like, ah, like these girls, like, you know, if only, you know, make like one change or two, but it's like, if only she wouldn't, you know, like be married or if only she was like, not say I'm ugly or like stuff like that. Did no, one, say that to no you? one's ever called me ugly. I've been called, <laughs> I've been called short and small, but which short is short and small. Which is like I'm not insecure about. I'm not really insecure about anything, but that's just like, man, you really like that's not nice. I'm like hurt that you don't care about my feelings. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Anyway, there's a lot to yeah. unpack there, but go on. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like, man, if only like. You know, it would change like one or two things, but it's like that's who the person is. If the right. so, um, I was in a relationship with someone that I think was married, and uh, that was someone that was married. It was like when I found out, I was like, okay, gotta get out of here. It was like, no, so. that's like that's a huge thing. It's like, yeah, that's not, that's not like, oh, they don't they leave their clothes on the floor all the time, yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. That's um, not that's that you can like learn work through, but. Already being married is kind of yeah. So I remember thinking like, God, if only these like when I was at the time I was thinking about one person, like if it was just like one change, and then it was like, God, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Armando. We just read your comment, Armando. <laughs> um, so I'm not short, man. I'm five eight. <laughs> I am taller than 75% of the female population. That anyway. seems like a lot. Um, <laughs> um, I'm 5'7". You're taller than me. That's fine. Uh, so I remember thinking, like, if only just, like, a change, but it's, like, that's who that person is. So, you know, like, you know, I wish they were someone else. So that's the hook. Like, I wish they were someone else. Okay. And also, there's a lot of other things. Um, and I'll tell you this now because we're talking about stuff. The... Uh, you know, like some of those abstract paintings are just like one single line, mm -hmm. um, or it's like you know, just blue, and then there's a yellow mm -hmm. strip in the center. Um, I think. Were you the shortest in your class? <laughs> Thanks for no. the constructive dialogue. <laughs> I was actually a big kid. Um, <laughs> I'm not that much taller than you. That's right. Every you're a girl, so I am taller than you. So. <laughs> My statistic probably still holds anyway, up. Anyway, we're talking about art, yeah. blue, yellow, simplest. So um, I don't remember where I, I don't remember where I read read or heard this. Um, for some reason, I think it, it was like in Breakfast. Kurt Vonnegut's gets Breakfast of Champions. Okay. But um, the one interpretation of those abstract paintings is if you had, I think the famous one is Saint John the Baptist. If you wanted to paint Saint John the Baptist and you painted him and you left all his ears, would it still be Saint John the Baptist? Yeah. And if you got rid of his eyes, his hair, and you started removing things, would it still be him? Yeah, it would be a representation of him. Mm -hmm. Just remove everything. Remove everything. Okay. Well, you're left with, like, it's a single line, single line that represents his essence, his light, or whatever. Mm -hmm. A single beam of light. I don't know why but I remember that line from something. Um, so it's like, that's what a person is. So, you know, whether someone is tall or short, or whatever, all that other stuff, what is they leave their clothes on the floor? Those things are like don't matter. It's like what is their essence? Yeah. So this that's like a highfalutin way of looking at this song. But that's really that was really deep. And I'm a big Kurt Vonnegut fan, so I appreciate that reference. But oh, make a song about wearing sneakers in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> Soggy. Is there an inside joke we don't know about? No, I do not know. <laughs> he lives in Florida now. I don't know. There's a lot of above ground pools oh. in Florida. <laughs> Kenneth says hi, Patty. Patty's outside with Gussie, and they're both just crying. <laughs> they are. They but Kenneth, thank you. I got your letters. Thank you so much. Um, anyway, I guess I should play the song. Anyway. Or write a song about wearing sneakers in a pool. Okay. Maybe we'll, maybe it'll we'll finish this cocktail and, and write it after the show, and we'll yeah, send yeah. it to you, Parker. Okay. <laughs> I'm on board. <laughs> This is the right time to write that song. It's true, yeah. Okay, all right, maybe this song. Okay, here we go. Soft shoulders, I love the 
mushroom talk. Love to watch you wave your hands when I listen to you talk. I memorize your hazel eyes, the pattern and the hue. I love your eyebrows too. But lately I've been thinking about what's going on in your heart. Deep, deep, deep down beneath, I wonder who you really are. The things you want, the things you don't, and the reasons why you do. Well, that's what makes you you. I want to watch the sunset. I want to fall in love with the pretty colors. Just ain't in love. I want to hear you comment. I wanna watch you smile, but you're less the things that I can touch. More words inside. I wish you'd say you're sorry when you know that you're to blame. Hold me close when I need you most instead of walking away. Think of me instead of thinking of yourself. I guess the thing that I'm trying to say is I wish you were someone else. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> you see how it's the same trick, kind of with the... Yeah. That, that's it. Yeah. Go on. Go on, go on. <laughs> this is the hard part. It's new. You could quit your job. You could change your head. You could move away. You could fool yourself, but I know you'll always be the same. But treat the two, it just won't do. For changing what's in stone. Probably best if left alone. Never really saw the whole. Just a piece. Still feeling the bounce up with what I wanted to believe. I pretended to know what's inside your soul. Foolish from the start. Only got so far. Don't watch the sunset. I wanna fall in love. The pretty colors just hate enough. I wanna hear you coming. I wanna watch you smile. But you're less the things that I can touch. Bone words inside. Wish you'd say you're sorry when you know that you're the way. Now hold me close when I need you most instead of walking away. Think of me instead of thinking of yourself. I guess the thing that I'm trying to say. I guess what I wish deep down down is that you were someone else. There you go. I made it. You did it. That's great. I had to think hard to get those lyrics right. That's a great song. I feel like it's too wordy. Uh, Lisa says she can totally relate. <laughs> I think that we all can. I, like, I was just thinking, yeah, like, there is, oh, there's just, like, tweaks you wish you could make, but then it was like that. Oh, this but is, they're not tweaks. They're not tweaks. So this is, like, part of your core being as a human being, and, like, oh, and then you stop lying to yourself, and you're like, oh, yeah, this is a deal breaker. I realize that now. Anyway, I think that's very relatable. But it's funny, but at the same time, when that first chorus lands, it's funny, but at the same time, you're just like this moment of like, but I've so been there and it's not that funny, <laughs> but, which is a good song. Like in that way, it really is super relatable. So mm. good job. I'm Thank excited you. Appreciate about it. it. I got the... Uh, we you got two thumbs up from you liking your song. I like all your songs though. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Back at you. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my God. Um, what do you want to tell strangers on the internet and some people who aren't strangers on the internet about what's going on with you right now? Um, Lisa and Parker, I love you guys. I wish I could give both of you a big hug right now. And anybody else I know that's watching, um, even that, even if I wrote a song about you that I played. Um, <laughs> uh, and all, also, I do want to say this. Uh, so I think it, Kenneth is like that. And there's a dude that watches you from Cape Cod. Is that right? Kenneth is the one from Cape Cod. Yeah. And um, then there's some other people, uh, that watch you too. Um, Kenneth, man, uh, he goes by Kenneth? I think so. Yeah, like, it is so cool. Like, it makes me feel good that you guys uh, watch Alicia, that y'all, like, care about her. Like, that it really does. It makes me feel good. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, uh, so much. Uh, I love you guys for loving on other musicians. It's like they're independent musicians all across the world, and um, 
you can fall in love with musicians that there's a musician a songwriter out in, in Nashville and who wrote some songs for um uh Allison Krauss. Mm -hmm. And right now she is a school teacher. Mm -hmm. Um she was a babysitter for a while. Like she has like 700 followers on Instagram. She, I think she's one of the greatest songwriters on planet Earth. And <laughs> but it's like, you know, like she's just a solo person out doing her own thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, like I love her. And uh it seeing other people appreciate you, I like I really dig that. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So good for oh, you, you guys. <laughs> you know, seriously though, like this, I'm starting, I'm going to start moving these to monthly episodes instead of weekly. Weekly is going to be quite a lot, uh, quite an undertaking. Um, and I have a lot going on. And I, if you are on my email list, you saw that I am making a full length record this winter. I just hired a producer and I'm going to Nashville in February to record a full length record. And so I have a lot of work to do, so I'm going to scale back on happy hours and start vamping up the songwriting, and I'm going to be doing a fundraiser in January to help fund that record project, so I'm going to be scaling back on happy hours, but I hope, I hope that means that the quality will go up because I'll have more time to prepare and, like, really make it a big thing because this has been a really cool experience as far as, um, there are people who are loyal every week or they tune in later and they tell me how much they love it, and I really, 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 really appreciate that because... Things are so weird for everyone right now, but this is really nice to connect with other musicians has been an awesome part of it, which I love so much. But also to know that there are people who really do care about us talking about whatever and then sharing these brand new songs. And I feel like this is a safe space to share brand new songs, stuff we're working on. And I really just appreciate you guys giving this platform merit so thank you for that and um i doesn't mean i'm gonna stop because i just love you guys so much but um it's just gonna change a little bit so i can focus on stuff but thank you for being here and next month i'm gonna have scott rogers from the proper way as my guest and it's gonna be you talk about? yeah he's from ogden mm -hmm. and he's super rad and um yeah so check out the proper way and everyone take care anything else i think we're golden happy halloween be safe out there cheers guys yeah cheers cheers Cheers, y'all. Oh, thanks. Cheers. Cheers. All right, bye, guys. Thank you.